Hey everyone, it's Danielle Taylor with Keller Williams Realty here on the beautiful Outer Banks. And today I would like to address a question that I get frequently, and that is, will my beach house pay for itself? Great question. And so, you know, a lot of the people that purchase down here are using homes as a uh, rental property. And so it's a, it's a realistic question. It's, it's a fair question to ask. And so really that depends. So that's the answer you did not want to get. That depends. But here's the way that I would look at it if we were looking for properties for you that you wanted to try to get as close to paying for itself as possible. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that you're purchasing it with the best possible parameters. So the purchase price being the best it can be at the time, interest rate being the best it can be, and really looking at your down payment, how much you're putting down. The more you put down, the better the chance we have to cash flow. The second thing that we really want to, to factor in there is how much do you plan to use the home and what are you currently spending on that beach vacation? For a lot of people, if they normally come a week a year and they spend $6,000 for a week a year, if the home ends up costing them $6,000 a year to own it, it can actually be a wash and somebody else is covering the majority of the costs of ownership. So that's the second thing is thinking about how much you're going to use it. The third thing is really diving into each property to look for upside. And by upside, I mean, can we increase the income? Income can be increased by increasing occupancy. So maybe you can leave the calendar open longer. Maybe you can use it less in prime weeks. It can also be affected by rates. So do we have the best, most competitive rates in place? And com by competitive, I mean, are they high enough and or not too high? If they're not high enough, you're gonna book fast, but you're leaving money on the table. If the rates are too high, you might miss weeks and therefore affect your occupancy, which is affecting your overall rental income. So that's something that we wanna dive into. The higher we can get that rental income number, the better the chance that your beach house will pay for itself. The last thing we really wanna be super critical on is expenses. Are there ways to dive in and decrease those expenses? Are there things being paid for that you could do your, yourself? Could you do your own deep clean? Could you do self-management? Could you run it as an Airbnb and save the commission expense? That's an option. Could you renegotiate vendor contracts? Is there some savings that could happen by renegotiating your pool contract or your landscaping or your maintenance man? Um, last but not least, um, could you get rid of some services you have. So for instance, a lot of people are moving to smart TVs and yet they forget to cancel ter the terrestrial portion of their cable bill. So is that something that could save you money every year? Um, you know, those kinds of things will factor into the overall bottom line. And the last thing is to really make sure that you're diving in and speaking with your tax advisor and financial professional to look at what the bottom line implications are for your financial situation. Sometimes there can be tax benefits, even if the home isn't 100% paying for it itself. So just all of those things should be factored in and thought about when you're evaluating the property and make sure you're working with a realtor professional that can look past maybe actual income that's happening now for opportunity with both occupancy and rate. Again, if you like this information, make sure you subscribe to the channel so we can keep you updated. And um, don't forget the newsletter. If you like data, we give that out every month. And I hope you have a great day.